Today I'm going to be playing for you O Kama Kami Manuel from my book and then afterwards going through some of the tricky spots. And I'm in E minor, not the optional six flat. tricky spots and things that I just wanted to highlight about my arrangement. Um, when you first start off, it's really simple. You're just doing the melody with some simple octaves and notes underneath of it. And um, a lot of people are scared to play loudly in this section. And don't be. Make your melody sing. Use all the colors that you can to keep this uh, a flowing line that sounds like Somebody singing it. Uh, o Come, O Come, Emmanuel <clears throat> was originally a Gregorian chant, so it should always sound like this beautiful, connected, fluid ribbon of sound. Uh, so that's kind of the, the most important thing in the first section. Also, with those uh, fermatas, make sure you're not cutting that measure short. Don't come in with your next phrase um, too soon, because that's really disconcerting to your listeners. Make sure that you know where your harmonics are because it's really fun when they come out really clean. And then we have this double harmonic. And without going into too much detail, 
basically you're going to be using the, the flat end of your hand to get both of these harmonics at the same time. So you figure out where's my top one, where's the bottom one, and you're trying to hit that spot with the side of your hand, and then you use your thumb and your two to play above. And you kind of have to push fairly hard to get that bottom one especially. So practice that by itself, and if you just cannot do it, it's okay to leave off one of those notes, either one. Uh, I would leave off the E. Um, that's totally fine. So, okay, moving on to the second verse uh, where you go up an octave. I think the key to this section is to write in your brackets right at the very beginning and then practice them and stick with them because your hands are doing different things, contrary motion at different times, and that can be uh, a little bit hard for your brain <laughs> to manage unless you have those brackets just really uh, firmly in your mind. So be diligent about that. But, of course, the most important thing is that your melody, again, is just soaring over all of this. So even though you're thinking about your brackets, make sure you're also listening for that, that melody, which is what's going to make this all really beautiful. And um, we have some chords then in this third verse down at the bottom of page one. And this is my favorite part, where all of the, the rich harmony comes in. <laughs> the shape of all these chords are. Just practice them. You know, practice. A scale of just that one chord shape and then move on to the next one. Until that's really comfortable. I like to roll them, but you don't have to. You could roll some and not others. It's totally up to you. Um, I do feel very strongly that you should slide into them because you want to make this sound as connected and fluid as possible. And if you're jumping, thumb, chord, thumb, chord, it sounds uh, like you're jumping, you can hear it, as opposed to sliding. It sounds much more connected, which is the goal. Um, at the very end, the second measure to the end of page one, I have this kind of funny fingering. Just think of it as a big four finger C chord, um, but you're playing it separate. I just think it's the most efficient way to get to that. <clears throat> and on the end I have two, three, four, just because your fingers are already there, so you might as well use them. Moving on. Um, good, so at the top of the second page, there's not a, a lot of tricky spots here. Oh, these ornaments. So instead of thinking of these as Celtic ornaments, which tend to be really fast, these are meant to imitate early um, medieval vocal ornaments. So don't play them any faster than you'd be able to sing them. if you want, but they shouldn't sound really fast. Um, this next verse, we're on the second line of page two, the melody is different. Don't, don't automatically fill in the normal melody here. In the left hand, you'll notice there are a lot of tenths. There are these big, big intervals. If you can't reach those, just, you know, make it a, an octave or something, or, or skip the bottom note so that you can, you can play it. Making this all a beautiful melody um, with the left hand that supports it is more important than playing all the exact 
notes on that page. Uh, I do want to mention that at measure 75, there's this huge chord, which I can reach, but I know not everybody can physically reach that. Um, and if you can't, just take that top D in your right hand. Good. And I like having these octaves flat so that it cuts out some of the, the ringing of um, the different harmonies. students make sure you hold that last measure with your hands up the whole time to help the audience continue to listen to that last note. Um, yeah so I think overall the most important thing like I said is to have your melody ringing through um, and to listen to what you're playing especially in your right hand and then also don't be afraid to play forte even though this is a minor song and it's slow, um, there are some really rich, powerful harmonies in here that you want to bring out, and the harp is very capable of doing that, so have a lot of fun with that. If you have further questions, feel free to write them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.